have some. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Yes, Have Some podcast. My name is Craig Goldberg. Welcome to the show. We are in a post Gil Kennan interview era. We finally had Gil on. It was actually funny when we talked to him. I think before he was like, Thank you for being so patient. I'm like, Movie just came out a couple weeks ago. Like, we're good. <laughs> It's yeah. not like it's 2027. Like we're we're it's not even out on on streaming yet. Right. Like we're, I thought it was great. I thought it was very timely. Had a great conversation with Gil. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and let me introduce my co-hosts, Abigail Gardner. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Um, staying hydrated. And uh yeah, I was soaking up the sun this morning. I said that earlier on the Patreon portion of this, which you should all sign up for Patreon so you can hear. Yeah, we just did a bonus episode for Patreon. Yeah, 30 that was minutes. good. 30 whole minutes of just confessions, confessions. It was just like Usher. Just These are so my many. confessions. <laughs> These are my confessions. <laughs> hey, my brother told me this weekend that confessions was his go-to uh, karaoke song. <laughs> Not surprising. I would love to see that. He loves Usher. You know what? He also loves Weird Al. He does love Weird It Al. balances him out. Okay. That's his. He loves Weird Al and Usher. Yeah. Um, Jacob Walsh, how are you? I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm here. I... I want to watch a movie. I want to go to sleep. I want to get out of my house. I have conflicting feelings. It's this uh, like this weekend's coming up. Do I stay <laughs> home? Do I sleep all weekend? Do I go no. kayaking? Like the weather's oh. it's warm. I you know. know. Ooh, um, you should go kayaking. It's almost too. It's almost already too hot to go kayaking. Is the problem though? It's like. Down in, in, in South Georgia and Florida, it, it, it's warm. It's like nice during the early morning. But as soon as you hit like two, three o'clock, it feels like death. It's like mm -hmm. if you're if you're under the sun, Craig knows it, yeah. it's awful. It is awful. So like being on the water with no shade, you're it cooking. Can be, it can be pretty awful. But uh, I don't know. I, I'd like to I'd like to go. OK. Yeah, I don't know, man. You yeah. should maybe go. I like that you were like, I want to sleep. I want to watch a movie. I want to leave well, the just, house. I, I was like, it sounds like you should just go get a hotel and watch a movie. Well, it's just all the things I want to do that are always. It's like, do I just I could just sleep all weekend and that would be great. Or I mm -hmm. could like be productive, Dude. which would also right. be good. I don't know. I was productive. I cleaned out. I cleaned out. <laughs> we're still talking. We. We're still talking. Sorry, to Dennis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's Denis. Uh, His name's not is Dennis. It? <laughs> is it? His name's not Dennis. Oh. I don't know what his name is. Um, I cleaned the laundry room yesterday. I did like a whole project. Yeah. Abby, didn't I do good? You did good by me. You sent me a text. You were like, I'm getting dinner. And it sent the picture of the clean back room, which is Whoa. great. It, yeah. You know how that laundry cool. room was like yeah. you had to like go in to, in order to start the, the washer. You had to like go over a bunch of boxes. <laughs> you had yeah, to like, climb on top of the dryer. Yeah. Like Legends <laughs> of the Hidden I was Temple. hurting myself <laughs> trying to do the clothes. Um, so yeah, I was really grateful that you cleaned that out. Um, and we're, we have a no box policy now. I like room. it's like six months straight of Ghostbusters talk as soon as it's done. Well, I cleaned the laundry room. finally. <laughs> <laughs> Threw away a bunch of boxes. Mm, a lot of Amazon boxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna um, we're gonna talk about the omen tonight. We're gonna talk about the the f uh, the first omen, which is a name of a movie. It's not just what I call the original omen uh, to avoid any confusion there. But I had never seen the original, so I want to talk about that as well mm -hmm. and talk about where I think it fits into my horror pantheon. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna talk about the first omen, which is one of a. There's a lot of new horror movies out, is there not, Jacob? Yeah, there are. There there there's a steady stream. Mm -hmm. Steady stream of horror. And um, before we get into that, though, I did. I think we should give a small Ghostbusters update uh, box office wise. Um, man, kind of still chugging along. You know, it's at uh, 103.8 million going into this uh, upcoming weekend. Um, oh. Actually, that doesn't include today. So it's probably going to be at 104 and a half or something going into tomorrow. And then maybe it'll make another three to five million this weekend. And then going into this weekend for international, it's at 73 million, which is interesting because Afterlife made 74 total internationally. So it's mm -hmm. going to make more internationally, which I think is a good sign because I think Ghostbusters has struggled 
Um, internationally and as gil was saying in our interview like that's that was part of it was the inclusivity of like let's get this out there for all the ghostbusters fans yeah, so that's great yeah. um so it's it's going to inch towards 200 million uh total in the next couple weeks and reports of a hundred million dollar budget so you know tax breaks sponsorships i don't know how any of this shit works but yeah it, it kind of seems like it's not I'm sure they want. They always wanted to make more, but it's consistent. Sure, and it's not. Go- it's not bad. It's, it's not. not bad. It's not like great, right? But it's pretty. It's pretty good. It's doing. It's, it's making. Its, it's made its money back. It's doing good. It's yeah. still making money. It's still in the theater, and it's good for the brand. It's profitable. I mean, we could. We can pick apart release dates and schedules and all that. I do think. Having Kong come out the next weekend was tough, but also like there's big movies that come out almost every week. It's really hard to figure out um, when to release a movie, but to break a hundred million domestic is still a big achievement. And they're very they're cost conscious when making these movies. the The days of just sinking 180 or 200 million dollars into a franchise movie, it's just the unless it's Marvel. Or I don't even think I think Star Wars is going to scale back. Like I don't. We're just kind of in a different era of yeah. movie going. Um, mm-hmm. Unless you're Godzilla and King Kong, then you're just in your own Bigger, kind of <laughs> stronger, faster. And yeah. Jacob, I feel like you have conflicting feelings because obviously you love the Godzilla and Kong, but it's um, well, it Godzilla Godzilla X Kong is. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm happy that it exists. I'm glad it's out there. It's a fun movie. It's Godzilla. I'm never going to root against Godzilla. But it is the worst movie in the monster verse. Like out of the what four or five movies four that five, we've gotten, yeah. American Godzilla. It's the worst one. But we were talking about it last night on Monster Island. It's at over four hundred million dollars. It came out after Ghostbusters, and it's already past four hundred million. It's mm-hmm. it's beating all of the other. It, right now, it's just under Godzilla twenty fourteen for what it's made. But it might still catch up with with that movie. I don't know how yeah. much longer it's going to be in the theater, but it's doing really well. So there's a hundred percent going to be more of those and that, and that's great, but uh, right. Yeah. But you know, I want ghostbusters to do good. I want it to be a sure thing and I want it to keep going. And I think it is going to keep going, but Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. No doubt. I just think ghostbusters as a, I think as a franchise, like I'm always trying to figure out Abigail, what the comp is like, what is it? It's not star Wars. It's not Marvel. It's not like, is it close? To, it's unique, but is <clears throat> yeah, it, it feels own. like it's close to Star Trek. Maybe no, the demographic. <laughs> maybe no. maybe yeah, sure. I don't know. Um, not like in the, that. In that, Star Trek has Star Wars to compete with, and everything else is always no, a little no, bigger it, than in it. In the sense, just as like if a new Star Trek movie came out this year, I think it would no, be it comparable would. box office. No, no. Go look, go look and see what the J.J. Abrams Star Trek made. I bet it fucking made so much money. Mm. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but that was already like ten. That's the other yeah, problem. But, was but, that. but but still, but like Star Trek is always there's ten Star Trek movies. You can't compare that to Ghost. The last, it's, the last Star Trek movie came out in 2016. Okay. The, mm-hmm. the domestic box office was 158 million. Okay. Um, huh. The the JJ Abrams one from 2009 box office was 257 million. Um, but but Star Trek has that more international, you know, fan yeah. base too. So so mm-hmm. I don't know. But l- listen, it's so hard to compare to in. Yeah, it's because it's it's a comedy like in it's a horror comedy. It's very, it's not exactly the same as any. It doesn't really have true straight up sci-fi elements like star trek or, or star wars yeah. so it's it's it's, it's i'll be interested thing. to see what beetlejuice does i have a feeling beetlejuice is going to be very big i just have this feeling like it's like it's that right pocket of nostalgia and jenna ortega jenna ortega it's the first Ugh. time Re- beetlejuice has not been revisited since 1989 is, i but, i meant to yeah. i meant to bring this up on toy anxiety last night and forgot but uh, I, the fact that there's a new Beetlejuice coming out makes me wonder if there's going to be toys because you know the first movie had a big toy line sure. and um, yeah. I was just thinking about how much I would really I really wish Kenner was around to put out 
like a Kenner style Beetlejuice line right. for the, for this new movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to imagine there's going to be merchandising for it. Yeah, but the, um, but it will be like I bet there will be toys, but it will be like you know. It'll look like plasma series figures of Beetlejuice. So, it's like, who cares? yeah. <laughs> so you want more like a kids focus fun. I want toys that look like toys. Yeah. Toys that look like toys. All right. He said not that. mannequins, not <laughs> six inch mannequins. Yeah. Dude. Do you remember that movie mannequin? Have you guys ever seen that? I think I saw yeah. like a TV edit on comedy central when mm-hmm. I was young. What's it about? Mannequins come to life. It's like one mannequin that well, falls in love with a person. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, that's it. There's a good Bob's Burgers episode about mannequins. Hey, they just don't make also, like also a Seinfeld episode. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the Elaine mannequin. Yes. Oh, yeah. Dude, dude, mannequins, mannequins are funny. Mannequins were huge in the <laughs> mannequin ghost. Answer the call. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's there true. One of the better parts. Yeah. Um. All right. <laughs> all right. Episode's over. Everybody no. okay? <laughs> Let me are you losing steam? Character. What's happening? No, I'm ready to talk about the omen. I'm yeah, let's fucking yeah. let's talk about omen. All right. the where, omen. Where, where should we start with this, Jacob? Well, there's Are a new three? omen coming out. This is where we start. So the the first omen, which is the prequel that's in theaters right now, is it still in theaters? Who knows? Um, uh, kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, trailer came out like last month or whatever, and it was like, what? There's another omen movie coming out, and uh, early like word from people or is that it's really good you know I, I i'm starting to see all these people on instagram uh or or reviewers and stuff saying like hey this this is a legit good movie go watch it so i'm like got me really excited i went and saw it the night it came out and uh i was like yeah this fucking movie's great it's the second best omen movie you know there's there's like <laughs> right. six omen movies mm-hmm. this is really oh. good so uh okay let's um we all saw it, but let's let's kind of take a step back and talk about the original. Okay, which I had never seen. I don't know why. I, I feel like um, it, it's definitely in the vein of of I like. You know, there's that pocket of 1970s horror movies that I I tend to enjoy, like The Exorcist <laughs> or The Shining and things like that. Supernatural horror, but I've never well in religious horror, which is mm-hmm. my I love religious horror is my favorite. Um, subgenre of horror because i do find religion just in yeah. general to be terrifying, terrifying. Like just the even just the regular like just going to church sounds yeah. scary it is um but i like religious horror and abby you had seen the omen before correct yeah and much like you i have that same interest in uh religious supernatural stuff not only i love reading stephen king stuff which is always about supernatural things but i i do find the church to be terrifying and interesting because i've had that inside perspective so um and seeing the omen for the first time not the first omen but the original omen uh i watched it back in the days of us doing our like halloween horror window um i think that jake had talked about us maybe talking about it so i i watched it and i remember being like oh this is like a huge important pillar like in the in the horror movies like this is Mm -hmm. got scenes that are like really disturbing and unexpected for the 70s um maybe not unexpected but very much like groundbreaking and genre defining and um watching i I, my honest real feeling about um damien and the omen is that i I love the idea of the antichrist being born in like a modern day time and then being like that that child's relationships with relationship with its parents and the fact that he's like a kid, which is so innocent and cute, but like at the same time has the power of like the fucking son of uh, Satan. Um, And I just, I love it. All right. I love little menacing things like that. And have you never seen problem child? No, (laughs) I think you'd like that. No, (laughs) I think I was one. (laughs) Well, problem child does have red hair. So yeah. Oh, Um, okay. You, uh, I like calling him Problem John. <laughs> that's his name. Look, problem John. His name, what was problem his name? Well, that's why I, I like remember. calling Damien Omen. Like his yeah. first name is Omen. Damien's uh, Omen. Yeah. Problem Dude, Child. That kid looks like Omen. Hold on. His name is Junior. Junior. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Junior. Okay. Mm. Um. You, you're, you, Craig, talking about like how much you love religious horror. You, you guys have to sit down and watch Exorcist Three. 
you have to do it. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's in. great. We'll it talk is about so it. good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Omen's one of those movies that I think is right up there with like, you, you don't hear it talked about as much and you know, it's not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's as good as Rosemary's baby or as good as the exorcist, but it is in, it feels like you could watch all those movies together. They all have mm -hmm. the same vibe. They feel a little more real. They're a little more scary. They're all a little less silly. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, Omen fits right up there with those movies. Um, the original Omen, uh, directed by uh, Richard Donner. That's crazy. Yeah, Richard Donner, most famously, uh, or most famous for directing uh, Superman, Superman, mm -hmm. Superman, Superman Two, um, and going on to direct The Goonies and Scrooged. Oh. Cool. Um, family and Lethal Weapon. Like, did, did Richard Donner did some stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did some shit. <laughs> um, starring uh, Gregory Peck. And what I love about this, first of all, this era of filmmaking when you just get these like legendary actors. Like, you can yeah. just see Gregory Peck on set just being like, "Don't bother me till it's time to shoot don't bring me to set like just being like a yeah. total asshole but then like he's great like he's yeah. really great in it is he not mm -hmm. yeah um, it's really fun watching him try to murder a child yeah and lie to his <laughs> wife the entire time they're together <clears throat> yeah um so um i really really enjoyed watching it um i really thought that it, it has all the stuff i like about that time period of movie making and like i don't know like uh jacob is it inspired at all by like italian horror uh what's it's gotta it? be sure yeah Our, yeah, yeah. what's sure. his name argento yeah. um argento. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well the the first omen definitely is there, there 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 is a scene in the first omen that happens um that is directly pulled from this really awesome movie uh called possession that i really love yeah and uh i'd only seen possession for the first time last year but it's um it's amazing it's just like it's awesome it's fun it's weird and uh there's a famous scene in that movie that i, I don't want to give it away but they kind of emulate that scene in the omen and it's right it's like, Babysitter? It's a kind of, no uh it's oh. a kind of scene where when it happens, if you had not seen the possession, you're probably like, what the fuck is happening? But when I saw it, I was like, oh, shit, they're doing possession, you know? So, okay. um, I don't know where that was going, but, uh, no, but it's I on my it. list it now. It's an impassioned speech <laughs> yeah, about that how you liked it. The Gil Kennan, um movie he was talking about the other night. Um, that's on my list. Uh, I think, I think possession is also on shutter. I don't know. I, I don't know oh. if you guys have a shutter. Uh, we got shutter. We I better. can get you one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can get you an. I can get you, you, can get you. It's like a little salesperson. Yeah. Hey, I think I can get you guys in the shutter. No mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> so, Jacob, you're right in the, in saying that like the first Omen kind of came out of nowhere because like I don't think I heard about this movie until the week it was coming out. And let's be honest, you you hear, oh, it's a prequel to the original Omen. It. it you can roll your eyes at something like that because yeah. a lot of these movies come out and they're just not great. We all just survived exorcist believer last year, which was not a prequel, but I mean, I mean, we, we buried that movie and I don't always feel super comfortable burying movies because I'm not a director. I'm not, I've never written a movie. I know how hard it is to make a movie. Sure. I don't take pleasure in, in just going, Holy shit. What a travesty. But mm -hmm. from Exorcist, the comfort of our own home. <laughs> yeah, while I sit back and ponder what flavor of popcorn I will be making tonight. Um, <laughs> probably movie theater butter, just putting it out there. Yeah. Um, but the Exorcist Believer was so it was awful. Bad. Yeah. But this movie, the last omen or the first omen feels more like an Exorcist movie than the Exorcist Believer did. Like it has yep. Exorcist vibes Actual. to it. It feels real. Mm -hmm. You it's like you're it look it's like a serious take on a movie and then fucking crazy shit happens out of nowhere and i'm like this feels like how the exorcist should have felt i agree it does and it has like these they i mean they do go out of their way to kind of utilize these like 1970s 
um, kind of filmmaking tactics and these shots where there's like these, there's something they used to do in movies that they don't necessarily do anymore where and I, I'm specifically thinking of the first Omen. Wait, no, the Omen. The original Omen. The original the original The Omen and The Shining, where it'll be a shot where it locks in on a character and then something happens kind of to the right or left of them. And then a, instead of cutting to it or quick panning to it, it does like a slow pan to the right and the music swells and then the camera comes in a little bit and they do it really effectively in this movie. And clearly it's an homage to bring you into that like aesthetic of that type of filmmaking. Yeah. Um, but it's not just that it's like the, the film grain, the way it's color graded, the setting, they took it in like having it being a, a European non-American setting. Um, I mean, there's things about the exorcist that re, the exorcist believer that just did not work because when you're taking it from like, you know, the first exorcist, it's like, think about the house in the first exorcist, right? In the street and the fog and the street light. And it's, it's, you know, you're in the, the outskirts of Washington, DC. And, and there there's this kind of like grit to it. And then like in the new one, it's like, you're in Georgia, you're in the suburbs. Like it just takes you, <laughs> right. it takes you out it's of just it. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want it to be a comfortable like t time in the South. Kind of, I don't know. Something about that didn't totally doesn't add up because, in my opinion, if you're dealing with like biblical stuff, you're gonna want to like harken back to, you know, Roman Catholicism and the Church and the Pope and like really deep, you know, layer it deeply. Um, and so that that sort of like uh that it felt like the Righteous Gemstones version of um the yeah, Exorcist. That's and, a good yeah. Yeah, and as someone who has had an exorcism and is okay to talk about it after all these years of therapy, like I have this feeling of I'm like so sorry. It's okay. I I don't mind talking about it, honestly. Um, it makes you me fascinated. I don't know if you've ever matter. actually said that on the podcast in eight years. And I feel like there's gonna be a lot of people who are like, We're gonna need to do a little QA episode. <laughs> oh, um, I'll let you all know whenever I am going to talk about it. Yeah, there will yeah. be a full episode. But you've been through religious trauma. Yeah, I've been through religious trauma. Um, and so these kind of movies as a kid, horror movies in general terrified me, but as an adult who is a whole person now who is healed, I can go back and watch The Exorcist and uh, The Omen and really like see them as like, oh, these these movies aren't evil. There, there is no actual evil. There's just really talented people who make movies. Right. And usually they're very kind. Yeah. And usually there's very relatable content in horror movies. Mm -hmm. For people who feel like outsiders like me who went right, through yep. some tough stuff. And even if they are Hollywood elites who participate in like blood orgies, they don't <laughs> talk about that a lot on the podcast, right? Right, right. 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 So, you know, that's just like what they do in their <coughs> their downtime. Mm -hmm. And like, who am I to judge? Yeah. Well, some of that stuff does tie into why I loved the premise of the first omen. Um, like the fact that the church is so fed up with secularism that they're like, we need to bring about the Antichrist to shake shit right. up. We're going to get in a little bit of spoiler territory. Okay. So, um, Jacob, what, what did you yeah. think of the, the plot of this movie? Well, I overall, I liked it mostly. There are a couple things because it is a modern, like, it, it's not completely safe from modern movie tropes. You know what I mean? It's not. Okay, and and sure. there's none. And there's nothing in it that I think is like too out of left field or there, there wasn't too much where I came out of the movie. And I was like, oh, they of course they had to do that. But as a sign of like the times and modern movie making, there is a lot of just like made up plot shit that kind of negates stuff from the original. Um, there are a few things where, you know, they're, they're filling in a little, like the thing about the church is the one who wants to bring in Damien. I was like, Oh, that's, that's new. right. That's a weird, right. that's kind of a, a weird twist, but a it didn't, retroactive, bother, yeah. didn't bother me. But the way the movie ends kind of like with, uh, are we doing spoilers? Yeah, I don't we know. get a spoiler. Uh, yeah, just so like, yeah, the way this movie ends with like Damien's got a sister. There's another here's the mother here's a clone of the mother that was supposed to you know like <laughs> much like problem child too there that there's is a, a little <laughs> there's like clearly they're trying to set it up to do another movie and that yeah. is the only part where i'm like okay do we need that like this would have been fine by itself we don't need like there's no survivors in the omen you know in this movie there there is so it's like mm -hmm. 
you know, the mother is not around in the original film, but now right. they're showing us that she is around. So mm -hmm. it's like, right. there's a little bit of that, like retroactive stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it, none of it is like too, you know, it's, yeah, I think none it's of it's like offensive. It's just like, right. Oh, come on. Um, the movie centers around uh, this actress. Her name is Nell Tiger Free. Is that her real name? That's her name. Yeah. Nell Tiger well, Free. She's, she's, gra really she's great in this movie, but that name's she, ridiculous. She, she's really great in this movie. <laughs> um, and it's basically the plot is like she uh, shows up and she's basically going to become a nun at this uh, school, Catholic school mm -hmm. in sure. in in uh, rome uh, in 1971 there's all these protests going on um they're kind of like showing there's like this kind of like liberal you know coming out of the sexual revolution like uprising people are anti-establishment anti secularism people yeah. going up against the church <laughs> um and this whole movie uh kind of revolves around um this plan jacob alluded to earlier yeah where the church is realizing that people are falling away from god and not turning to the church and they're losing power and we all know that like specifically the catholic church is all about that power and that money, money. um so desperate to re this is uh coming from the description desperate to regain power against the rise of secularism they seek to bring about the antichrist to create fear and drive people back to the church um with um carlita who is the uh uh one of the i got god we really kind of got to get into the weeds of what's going on but they're basically trying to breed the antichrist they're trying to the, breed yeah, yeah. there there's there's all these rules i mean if you've seen the original omen you know that there are rules he needs to be born on six six at six in the morning or whatever yeah. like mm -hmm. there's there are rules to to how he has to be born. It's got to be a male. There's, uh, you know, the in the original, the mother was a jackal, but in this movie, the father is a jackal. They switch right. that mm -hmm. shit around, um, you know, uh, but just like some weird shit. And, you know, they're trying to make those instances happen and it's not happening or, or the babies are <laughs> and born nobody, weird or, the, you know, nobody stands Couple up and goes, whoopsies. listen, yeah. I know the people are falling away from the church, but I kind of feel like bringing about the Antichrist will they're be, a, it'll kind of go against what we're aiming to do uh, here. But it will ultimately bring everybody in. Yes. Yeah. Like, is it well, dangerous? Is it messed yeah. up? Yes. They're all brainwashed and cultish and, and crazy right. people. Like, right. they're not, they're mm -hmm. not in the right, they're right. right. Like, that sounds mm -hmm. so stupid, but like, right. when you watch you the movie, it. you're like, oh, these are crazy people. Yeah, but they I like the fact that- crazy people. You don't know at first because it plays out like a really good horror movie where it's like your the new setting seems kind of nice in the beginning where it's like oh cool she's going to be a, a nun and this is a nice group of like she's got a nice yeah you're like oh yeah it looks like they're helping out the the young and orphans <laughs> and the community and there's lots of ladies around it's just you know but well, then I... like the slow things in the movie like when when the the mothers the nuns are like smoking outside and some of those shots oh, are like oh dude, shit's really nuns? weird. Smoking, you find out it's the Antichrist factory. Old nuns smoking cigarettes <laughs> on trampolines. Antichrist yeah. factory is a uh, new band. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I thought, you know, her roommate who seems like a normal person, the yes. one who like takes her out and gets her yeah. drunk and shit. Um, you know, there's that scene towards the end where she's going through like a, uh, some sort of ritual and her, they cut her hair and, and right. everything. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be revealed that she was Mrs. Baylock, who is the who's who remember Mrs. Baylock is in the original the Omen first movie who Ooh. hangs herself. I thought yeah, it was yeah, going to yeah. be her or whatever. Oh, yeah. The, the one that shit. hangs herself. Right. right. Or, oh, or okay. either one of them, either the right. one who hangs herself or Miss. But that's not the same. But they're they, yeah. they have the same role. I've been but. stealing that line when, when I feed the cats. Now I open it and I before I pour it in, I look at all of them and I say. I did it for you. It's all for it's you. All for it's you. all for you. Yeah. It's all for you, Gizmo. <laughs> um, and he's yeah. Like, um. So, anyways, as the plot goes, you know, uh, goes on. Margaret, the main character, it is ultimately. I knew there was going to be a twist that she was going to be directly involved. You, it's, and it's, the, it's clear. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and it's like, oh no, it's actually her who will, they will breed. They will crossbreed the, with the demon with her to create the. They've had a bunch of failed attempts, you know, mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, just like any tech company, you know, you go, you, go <laughs> you hide them in the basement in a file. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, the, you know, there's some whoopsies and some mess ups. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I thought she was really great. And then it's kind of that they are telling that classic story that gets told time and time again, which is it doesn't matter what you're predestined for. You ultimately you can choose your destiny, yeah, which is you, again, it's something I, I grasped onto and was like, I love that. Right. Like triumphantly. That um, was a great part, but ultimately really fun, a uh, really well done modern horror movie. I will watch it again. It's a first time director, Arkasha Stevenson. Um, she directed a couple TV shows and then uh, got involved with this and, made one heck of well, a that's movie. awesome yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome Fuck it's a yeah. good it's a good it's a good movie and like there there are like five or six omen i mean they made the omen there's damien omen too there's uh i can't remember what the, <laughs> the third best one name for called, a movie there's a third one and then there was a tv movie there was a remake in mm-hmm. 2006 i think like there's omen a bunch three of omen is movies. um the final conflict <laughs> the final <laughs> conflict which um stars sam neill as damien Oh, oh really? Really? Yeah. Is Samuel the, is a grown up Damien. Grown up Damien. Is he in the White House? Yeah, I think he is. I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. Oh shit. We gotta get on these omens. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of omen movies. Now, here's the thing though. This movie's not doing that well in the box office. Um, I don't know if it's going to have a, a franchise future, but it kind of feels like maybe it's well, I don't think people- it needs it. Right. I don't think it needs it. Like I to me, like too many movies of this sort don't it doesn't need any more filling out you know there i don't think there needs to be another movie in between this and the omen the omen is this is a prequel to the omen they got us there mm-hmm. yeah Damien is born at the end of this film we don't need like i mean they they go so far as to like talk about gregory peck's character and show a a photo of him and everything like it it ties up every loose end i don't i don't think we need yeah a new franchise i i think it also offers like a little bit of a healing point and like um i i don't know if you love this part jacob or not but when like the the young the girl one survives basically and is like damien's sister sister survives um i felt like that was sort of an odd like a little bit of like a healing moment of like it's you can get out and escape and have a separate life i didn't feel like that was going to be a storyline they're like and we're going to follow up on this or that they needed to unless but they I, uh i thought it was un- comforting yeah un- unless they make another unless the next omen movie takes place 15 years later and it's right. damien versus his sister oh yeah. you know like that okay. kind of thing but I wait but it's like Mortal bom, Kombat. Bom, it's Mortal bom, Kombat. Bom, yeah. She has to go through. Damien's like top boss, final boss. Mm-hmm. And she has to go through a whole fighting, just like uh, all all the other mess up antichrists with weird faces. Yeah. And- well, Damien yeah. doesn't. Damien doesn't know he's the antichrist at first. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't right. know it until. I but think that he look. I think he doesn't figure it out until the second movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When somebody comes to him, they're like. You've got your father in you. <laughs> it's like Star Wars. It's That's what like I was Star just Wars. thinking. I was like, <laughs> would Max Damien's von Sydow like come to him? <laughs> it's going to be like, will she go to the dark side or will she be the Antichrist that turns away from it? All these. Hey, stories. remember, remember when people thought Max von Sydow was playing an old Boba Fett? In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for She'll always be royalty to me. <laughs> <clears throat> Max von Sydow. That's the Exorcist connection and Vigo. Mm-hmm. Yep. The voice. Mm-hmm. Don't do the voice. Um, really cool movie though. Uh, I while while we've been talking, I've been kind of like on a Richard Donner like kind of what an interesting career he had. It makes me want to go back and watch the first Super uh, Superman movies. I almost said Super Town. <laughs> it's not a movie. <laughs> Maybe we should write a movie called Super Town. Okay. Yeah, um, get it on Shutter. All right, quick pitch. Here's the log line. In a town where everybody has superhero powers, one boy must is figure the out, Antichrist. Is the Antichrist. <laughs> starring Damien in Supertown. I do like in the first omen at the end, the last shot where he turns around and gives that little smile. He's like, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. I, my favorite part of the uh, original omen is when he's going to church and he is just freaking the yeah, fuck he's freaking out, out in the car he doesn't want to go very relatable for me <laughs> um that's exactly how i was being driven to church oh yeah. Uh, yeah 
yeah, you see how uncomfortable he's he's like, yeah, like, hold on, like, where are we going? It's like a dog with no. fig- that figures out he's going to the, to the vet. vet, yeah, exactly. What, yeah, what street is this? <laughs> Um, maybe now, Craig, that you've seen the omen, you can go back and watch those. Uh, there are some South Park episodes that are highly like influence. Making, in, making yeah, well, there's the there's a character. Isn't there not a character called Damien in South Park? And then oh, he's yeah. like, every time he shows up, they have the music playing. The like with the you know the chorus singing the like dominoes like all that. <laughs> that that's from oh, yeah. the omen. Damien. That is, yep. yeah, nice. that is that's, that's from awesome. the omen. That's really good. Dude, I like a um um what was I just gonna say? Oh, the in Seinfeld, it's one of the funniest lines ever where they're talking about the omen. And Kramer goes, Who, Damien? There's nothing wrong with him, just a misunderstood little boy. <laughs> so funny. I um, agree. <laughs> so um that was really good. And then yeah, I was reading this Richard Donner Wikipedia. Here's an interesting fun Richard Donner fact. It says and we know Wikipedia has literally never been wrong about anything. It says that when there was a bidding war for Jurassic Park, Richard Donner would have served as director of Jurassic Park had Columbia TriStar won the bidding war for the rights after. Uh, wow. But they didn't. Good. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know if Richard Donner's Jurassic Park would have been as good as Steven Spielberg. No. Of course not. It, of course not. The logline would have been a. You'll believe a dinosaur can fly. Mm. <laughs> hey, this Superman. It's all for you, bad. Owen. <laughs> That's Jurassic World. Damn it. I was about to say, I was like, Owen. Craig's like, it Who's came Owen? to me. You don't like the Superman movies. Alan. I don't think they're very good. I I, I mean, I haven't seen them in a long time either. And it, it, it's partially because I don't I don't really care about Superman, but I I never thought those movies were very rewatchable. I used to love I used to watch the first one when I was a kid all the time. Yeah. I love the scene where um, I thought it was so funny when he's like holding up the car or whatever. Like as a kid, I was like, "That's crazy! You can't do that." Because <laughs> he's a kid. It's like that age old thing, like kids like seeing kids do stuff. Yeah. And when he's a kid and he like lifts up the car, I was like, "That's nuts! This guy's crazy." <laughs> um. So okay, well, I want everyone to check out the Omen. Let us know if you've seen it. Let us yeah. know if you've seen any of these horror movies. Hey, we it should gets... talk... go for it. What I was just gonna say, it gets me excited about. I like when we talk about horror movies because it makes me feel like October's coming and it's coming. And you yeah. know, I, you know, like la- listen, I want to go ahead and say this. I had some really big plans for like a YHS Halloween episode last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it and we didn't do it because we just didn't have time. So we'll do it was like too much stuff happening. Yeah. But I was like all bummed out. I was like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this kind of stuff. Let's remember, do it. Well, uh, remember the episode we did for Patreon that we put out on the cassette tape? Yeah. I wanted to do something like that again, where it's got all the, uh, you know, some mm-hmm. some sound effects and, you know, some spooky stuff. And we'll talk about some good movies. And uh, yeah. Let's do but it. yeah, talking that. talking about horror movies, it's just like I'm, it makes me happy. There's a lot of horror. There movies is a, in um, a theater right now, and mm-hmm. there's yeah. a gleam in your eyes. I'm noticing it. I think yeah. yeah, it's like mm-hmm. when I think about my like four favorite movies, or when I'm trying to narrow down favorites, like a lot of them are horror movies. Yeah, like it's I made just my the best time of the year. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, I well. Obviously, we all love going to Halloween Horror Nights. I don't mm-hmm. know if they're going to have an Omen House this year. Maybe they will. What would it be? You just like go through friend. and watch somebody kill a baby? That's it. That's the ride. I hope it's the conception scene. I, think it's, I, think it's, I hope it's the concession stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope there's a concession stand. I hope there's yeah, Omen the conception scene. <laughs> um, so I can have a little drink, a little snack. You're like, let me see. I'll have the Damien funnel cake and... <laughs> Do you have hey, the um, it's, this no, no, no. for you, Shay? It's like a it's like a piece of cheese in the shape of a baby with seven uh skewers yep. in it in the right yep. spots, you know. Nice. It's just <laughs> six oh, yeah, daggers. It's just one of those turkey daggers, legs. You're yeah. like it, but it just has a little six 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 branded on the other side. <laughs> That's cool. They should hey, just do that normally. I used to want to get that as a tattoo, the little six six six. Like Did you? In, oh, the, in, the in the little in the little triangle oh, the shape. Oh, six six in the circular. Right. Yeah, in the weird little shape, I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna get." But that. that's how we would know you're like, not the Antichrist because you would already have it. Right. Hey, maybe I do. I don't know. I love you know. Let's all a, shave our heads and see. This would be a great yeah, sitcom. See, he's got it. I want to see a sitcom about the Antichrist, and he comes back, and he's supposed to do 
like all the Antichrist stuff, you know, yeah. the uprising, you know, he's everything. like it's fat and lazy and he's like, yeah, I just want to watch. Well, I just, I just want to play funny. Nintendo. He's living at his parents' house. <laughs> yeah, he's just hanging out. <laughs> well, actually, this I had an idea. <laughs> wait, wait, hold time. on. He just hangs out at his parents' house who's just like a, re- a human mom and then a goat. <laughs> yes, yep. yes. It's hard to bring about the end of the world from your parents' basement. <laughs> bow, 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 he works bow, at GameStop. Bow, 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 bow. But the whole premise of the show is that he's like, this year, I'm finally going to do it. And it's like, do it. trying to. <laughs> now that now we're on. That's a something. good wait. This is a good premise. We mm-hmm. do yeah. He like cracks open the book of Revelation. It's the like, it's the Omen meets <laughs> Step Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> no, no motivation. <laughs> Doing the evil. Um. Mm-hmm. So, hey, we should talk about that Maxine trailer, too, since we're on the topics yeah. of uh, horror movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Max, Maxine awesome. trailer dropped. You guys excited? Yeah, <laughs> the Pearl and X are some of my favorite movies. So yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, I think it looks great. I, I um I think X is really 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 good. Pearl, I liked, but not as I didn't think Pearl was as good as X. Uh, but Maxine looks. Like it might be better than both of. Like it looks awesome. Like the, mm-hmm. it's got so much happening in that trailer, and there's like a video store, and there's just like all the things that like get me going. You know, all the things I want to be in a horror movie look like they're in Maxine, and the fact that the villain is a real life, mm-hmm. uh, you know, serial killer, a thing that really happened. Like it just, I don't know, man. This movie, like, I, I was a little. I don't want to say I was bummed, but I was like a little bummed with Pearl. Underwhelmed? But this, Yeah, I was a little underwhelmed. This movie looks fucking, fucking awesome to me. Awesome. So, I I like serial killers. I'm into them. I'm glad wow. they're not around. I'm, not, I'm just glad they're not around as much anymore. <laughs> like, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, like, you kind of, you got to watch your back. The you could have yeah. got serial killed. Yeah. You could have been serial killed at any moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I love the that Jacob. Did you finish that Richard Ramirez documentary? I did. Yeah, I did. Hey, it's really scary. It is disturbing. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's really really fucked up. I do love the way he gets caught. By the way, yeah, it's really funny. Yeah, yeah. all the sit. I I anytime citizens stop a thing from happening, right? Like I love when the I love when citizens are like, we this is just evil dies tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> evil dies tonight. Um. But anyway, so um, I really, uh, I really, Wait, that wasn't I was, the trailer. I thought I was playing the trailer. <laughs> that, that was, was just the teaser. teaser. That's fine. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, we didn't see. Well, go go get the trailer. Reaction. Although I go would, yeah, trailer. if you want to, if you want to work through it. Well, I mean, I we can go through it quietly like that. It's just I haven't watched it since it came out. So yeah, like, so let's re- do. Yeah. Okay. Um. So this is uh, Ty West's uh, follow up. The, the conclusion of the Maxine trilogy. Kevin Bacon is in this. <sighs> Fuck right? yeah! Almost unrecognizable. Yeah. Um, all right, let's try that again. I mean, I'll see this on like opening weekend, dude. I'm seeing this <laughs> opening night at the plaza in the same like I will straight up I saw Pearl in. I'll see it on a Saturday morning. When's it come out? Heck, dude. Mm-hmm. July 5th. Cool. That's Very a, soon. It's a good time. Hey, it's a good time to be alive, folks. Hey, July is gonna be a fun. We have Twister, Maxine. And Deadpool in July is going to be a fun oh, movie. Wow, mm-hmm. that's going to be good. Uh, yeah. Hey, I might see all three. Mm-hmm. Hit that button. Just, Hit that play. That's button. my new thing. My new favorite. Yeah, thing hear, yeah, yeah. We Dump. see. We know your new thing. I might eat dinner tonight. All right, here we go. <laughs> Do we want audio? Or we're just going to kind of. Oh, it doesn't look matter. At it. We can just we can go through it however you want. Um, I like the aesthetic. I really like this. There's something about like, you know, 1980s like. I don't know if you yeah. if you're I don't even know if I want to talk about this. Do you guys do your parents have porn? Uh, <laughs> yes. Did your parents have porn in the house? Yeah. The boxes were so big. <laughs> Why were the boxes so big for 80s porn? That's a lot of footage. I don't know. It's like those know. CDs that come in those really long packages. <laughs> I mean, I guess they don't edit 1985, anything out. So this, this is, is a lot this of... my birth year. This yeah, let's get most... back to this. To Look the at trailer. this video store. The video store. I love it. 
Mia Goth is in like a different look, like a hair metal type of like late 80s awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. And then as you can see, the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, is is part of the uh but are, part of the mix. I, I'm wondering it's like, like happening in the background of the story, I guess, and then probably somehow connects Maxine. with Maybe the face off, yeah. Yeah. Maxine's a copycat killer. I don't know what <laughs> this is gonna be. I mean, I think she's gonna stop him, is what I think. Bates, but yeah, all this Bates Universal Motel, you're like, oh, she's stuff? fucking Universal. <laughs> it's so awesome. Yeah. I mean, is I there like, a chance is... she goes on the tram ride and we see Jaws in this movie? <laughs> like, yes, if there's a kill yeah. on the tram ride, which I bet there will be. Like, that's I feel like that that opportunity to play around in history is like something that it's Ty so West weird. Said. I didn't even see it. It's just like wa watching this trailer. I was like, oh, cool video store. I like these aesthetics. Oh, Universal Studios in the yeah. 80s. Psycho. I'm like, why is everything that's amazing is in this trailer? Like, look, that's the back is lot. The back, back lot. Maybe. Oh, she's making a movie that's on the back lot of Universal yes. Studios. Yes. So that's why it, she's there. It's going to be like Pee Wee Herman. Dude, with the keys. This is so fun. <laughs> it's going to be great. Hey, here's another thing. Boogie Nights is one of my all-time favorite movies. And like the last act of Boogie Nights, like the last 20 minutes that takes place during this time period is the is the best. Yeah. Everyone's just fucking coked out making porns. Mm -hmm. This is going to be great. <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun. No rules. I bet it's going to be violent. I, I'm so violent excited. Violent as hell, yeah. I'm really excited. I, I think for it's going to be one. hot. I think it's going to be awesome. So anyways, back to these Back to these porn boxes being so good. <laughs> We've got to get one of those. What's that? There's an Instagram. Collection. There's an Instagram called what is it? 80s Beta Massacre. Have you ever been on that Instagram? No, and it's so. basically all this aesthetic. Like anything that's like smut, horror, 80s pornography. It's a good I'm looking for it's, it right now. It's a it's a good follow. What's mm -hmm. it called? 80s Beta Massacre. I hope I'm not promoting like a like they didn't get canceled or something, but did you, did you find it? I did, yeah. Yeah, there's, it's a good follow. It's a good follow. But it just reminds me of, of some of <laughs> It's a lot. There's a lot of porn on here. <laughs> Is it just porn? It's, it's not. Just a, yeah. It's not just, but like there's horror stuff and I see the ultimate warrior. Yeah, uh, cool. But it's like, yeah, it's just awesome but stuff. But it's like every other photo is um, pornography. Well, it's got the three B's. We're close to it. There's no 80s like, porn has the three no B's. There's no explicit nudity here. Do you know what the three B's are? Yes, probably. Big uh, boxes. Um, barely. Well, you're wrong <laughs> because uh, Joe Bob actually talks about the three B's in its mm -hmm. blood, breasts, and, and beasts. Oh, oh. Okay, I was gonna say yeah. another. I thought you were gonna say Bush. Me too. The band. Now we Matt Bush. <laughs> so grateful for him. Well, he's in most of them. Glass of rain. <laughs> um fuck, yeah. Maxine's gonna be awesome. Good shit right there. I'll tell you that yep. much. I love having really good horror to look forward to. That's it's yep. like the most heightened your senses can be, like in a movie theater. It's something that I didn't like I've mentioned, I didn't grow up watching horror movies and going to see them. So I celebrate doing that as an adult now. Um, and I can't wait to go see Maxine. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Um the Deadpool trailer came out. We don't think we need to cover it too extensively, but it it, it looks fun. It's I'm sure gonna, it. it's going to be Deadpool. Mm -hmm. It'll be a bunch of cameos, and maybe Hugh Jackman has digital arms. Maybe he does it. No one can tell. <laughs> Do you hear about this whole thing? No, I yeah. didn't. Do they look digital? Well, kinda. there's. I mean, they kind of do, but it's hard to tell these these days. But it's well because the sleeves get ripped off at some point. Mm. Right. Okay. And they're, and but people don't oh, know like if, to get them bigger. No, to 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 make his costume accurate. Like in the oh, okay. when the when the tr when the photo came out a while back, there's the picture of him in the Wolverine costume, but it's got sleeves, and Wolverine doesn't have sleeves. So right. a lot of people were like, "Why are they going to go through all this trouble to make the costume accurate, but then put sleeves on it?" So then there were like rumors, like, "Oh, well, he's going to rip the sleeves off at some point." So then the trailer comes out. The, the full trailer and half of the shots of him in the costume, the sleeves are ripped off. So, but people are like, well, did they actually rip the sleeves off or did they, or, they listening to or did they, back? yeah. Or did they like CGI his arms over the sleeves? So people wouldn't be so mad about it. But mm -hmm. I, I don't, I think they probably just ripped them off because if, if they did a CGI, then 
it's weird to me. They rip this, they take the sleeves off to make it accurate, but they also rip his shoulder guards off, which makes it again not accurate. Leave gotta the watch. you gotta leave the shoulder guards on. We have to look hey, at hold on. Hey, also, don't even talk to me until he puts his fucking mask on. It's not, I don't care until Wolverine's wearing a mask. Right. That's what you've always said. That's what I've always said. All right, so this is the trailer. I'm just going to skip to the whole sleeve thing. <laughs> Wait, what, which version of the trailer is this? It's got like I mean, some, like some, other, some other language. <laughs> I don't want to get a copyright strike. So, so he's he be- wearing sleeves there. He's wearing sleeves. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they're he's having also, a chat. He had his shoulder guards there. Yeah, there you can tell. Okay, this go, is right where. There. This is it when you see it for the first time. Sleeves gone. Okay, no sleeves. Is that a no fake shoulder guards? Zoom. I don't know. Is that a fake arm? Oh, that didn't work. Yeah, I can't. Well, I don't know what you're doing. I don't I mean, know. It looks it looks like an arm to me. The, all I know is we got to get those clicks, so the <laughs> thumbnail is going to say, fake arms? Fake arms? We talk about it for three seconds. Two seconds so people get mad. Yeah. Well, we don't know. Yeah. Um, Let's, um, we're near the end, but let's, we, I want to talk about this Quentin Tarantino thing. Okay. Because he was getting ready to make this this last movie. What mm-hmm. happened? So he announced that. So little backstory: Quentin Tarantino has always said he's only going to make ten movies. Right. Well, he's up to nine. Mm-hmm. And obviously, his last movie was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, Jacob, you've been critical of this ten movie plan, have you not? Yeah. I want 20 Quentin Tarantino movies. His he says he doesn't want to I mean, be one I of those get, directors trying to I I get it. I understand why he says that. But the rules don't apply to Quentin Tarantino. Like he 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 makes the most amazing movies every single time. Right. And I and I don't think he's anywhere near that point where he's going to start making bad movies. Right. I think he should just keep yeah. going. We haven't even seen one little Sign no, that that could like happen. Once, yeah, exactly. once upon a time in Hollywood's ama- it's great. It's just as good as is everything else. And I'm like, it doesn't feel like a director slowing down. Why would right. you only make one more? So I, I I get his like stress about not wanting to. He also on top of that he said he it was in this article that he wouldn't make any more movies past the age of sixty sixty or he's whatever. Like, he's already and he's 61. over the, he's over that. So. So know. basically, his I, last don't limit yourself. I say, like, if you're doing great, keep doing it. His last film was going to be called The Movie Critic. He had been mm-hmm. toying around with this idea for a while. Uh, details were loose on what it was going to be, other than it was going to be about a movie critic, a real one, possibly, possibly inspired by some 1970s film critic that was that would write um, reviews in the back of like a a porno magazine. So this is the main topic tonight. Um. This movie was going to be done at Sony Pictures. They were excited about it. It was going to to obtain a big $25 million tax credit from the state of California. They were going to actually film a scene very soon this year to get the tax credit and then do the uh, the rest of it next year. Mm-hmm. Um, Hollywood Reporter has this whole article about it. I suggest everybody watch it. But essentially, um, it's now not happening Okay, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, this is not going to be his next movie. the The main rumor was that they were going to bring back Brad Pitt, reprising his character as of uh, uh, is it Cliff, Cliff. Booth mm-hmm. from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And now it's not happening. But some of the stuff in this article that's really interesting is that there there were rumors that this was going to be almost like an Avengers uh, lineup. Uh, uh, well, in a sense that. This was going to be the end all be all. There's always been this thought that all of the Quentin Tarantino movies take place in the same universe and that this movie would have cameos from other actors and characters from the whole Quentin Tarantino filmography. Right. Because it takes pay- place kind of in the time period that like right. some of the other. Yeah, I was reading. I read this article yeah. and it was like they it's written in a way that it could bring in characters from other Quentin Tarantino movies that you haven't mm-hmm. seen since Pulp right. Fiction and shit like that. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like he could have pulled it off. Like I don't think that's my number one like 
final Quentin Tarantino movie. I, I'd rather him just make a great, another yeah. great movie. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna lie, like that sounds kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah. now he's not gonna do it. Well, I I read this article and 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 a couple people, you know, there's there's uh, quotes from a couple people in the article that are close to Quentin Tarantino or his filmmaking process, and they were like. This is nothing new that he's ri- he's done this twenty times. Like mm. he he's always got a project that he almost makes and then decides not to make. So they're right. like, mm-hmm. there's nothing like crazy that happened. He just de- he, he's just not making this movie anymore. He's gonna go do something mm-hmm. else. So right. Mm-hmm. And also like, the last what, time he what did was this- it? And I mean, it, they talked about you. You might be. What were you about to say? Because you might be about to mention what I was gonna say. Well, the hateful eight. He backed out of that. Right. He backed out of Hateful Eight. And then it also said that like he wrote uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is he wrote it as this huge book first. Right. And that was going to be it. And then like last minute he said, fuck it, I'm going to make it a movie. Right. So Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I don't know. Well, Abby, I trust what Quentin's going to do. Like, I I, I trust that he's making the right decision for himself. Yeah. I I don't think it's the final word either. Like Jacob's saying, like, I, I think there's a chance that he could if he's falling in love with things and at least like bringing them part of the way through like it seems like he's going to go back to them at some point i mean it would make me happy and i'd like to see a successful 10th movie and then i'd like to see an 11th and a 12th and even more see he's also talked about doing a series i wonder if that's going to be his his loophole he's like well i'm gonna do like a three season do a series. show yeah dude do yeah. it yeah that'd um, be cool yeah i'd watch it but more freedom i think here's here's my theory i think quentin tarantino very much wants the movie that comes out on the credits to say the final movie by Quentin Tarantino. A hundred percent. And if he, if he mm-hmm. does that mm-hmm. and then he 10 years makes another one, who's right. got egg who's, on who's his he's, face he's, now? No, he's stressed. No, we're all lucky for it. Like if he goes and makes another one, then you just, you make another great movie. No right. one's going to be like, nope, but nope. He, he said he wouldn't. But he also like, he's, he's already, uh using loopholes and stuff hey he's already made 10 movies he does not count death proof as a movie i'm sorry quentin yeah, and that's his best one so that's a great movie and it's better movie. than one or two of your other movies so it's like yeah. mm-hmm. does mm-hmm. he count he does kill bill as one it. movie he count i think he counts kill bill as one movie and then he counts i'm not sure on that you i gotta get to the bottom of this i mean yeah. listen i mean you can just <laughs> you can go He's through them the like, numbers what uh uh what what was the first Jack? There's Jackie Brown, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Kill, mm-hmm. Kill Bill, one and Kill two, Bill two, that's Death five. Proof, Inglorious, Django, uh-huh. Hateful, Hollywood. Okay, so he's already so made he's 10. made ten, but he right. doesn't count. He doesn't count uh one uh Death Proof. All right, real quick, let's get everybody's Tarantino rankings. Come on. <laughs> Can you even do a top three? Uh, I can do a top one. It's Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious Bastards is one of the best. Not only, I I mean, Inglorious Bastards might be like one of the best movies ever made. It's it's to me, it's so far above. To me, it's not even a it's not even a debate. That's his best movie. Um, Okay, but it's hard past that because they are all. I feel like. I feel like all of them except for Jackie Brown are like on equal footing. You know I what I mean? Like, like yeah. if you told me any of his movies were your favorite, I'd be like, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think death proof is number one for me. I think. Wow. That is. Hey, that's why is that surprising? I'm not saying it's surprising, but that's just a, that's a, I don't think that's a common. I think it's a take. I, I think it's a little bit of a hot movie. take, but I understand why. Yeah. yeah you understand great. why there's yeah. there. It, yeah. It pays off. Um, I'd say probably like Reservoir Dogs after that, and then maybe Hateful Eight, in my top three. Yeah, Dude, you're and just... I do love Inglorious Bastards too. The fact is, I love them all. Like I've got yeah. favorite things in all of them, which is why it's like, dude, make more, please yeah. give me more you things know what? to love. Hateful Eight's probably my number one. I love Inglorious Bastards. Um, obviously, I like Pulp Fiction, but it never, it never is like on my top. Like, no, I think I think Kill Bill's probably in my top, but if you did it as one movie, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then it would probably then it would probably be Hateful Eight after that. Mm-hmm. But then you think 
But Django's also Django. like amazing. Like, we all forgot about Django. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we didn't forget about Django. Those were my thing. With yeah, Quentin I don't Tarantino know. They're is, all great. Are, they're such yeah. great movie going experiences. You're just smiling the whole time. You can't believe how crazy and good the dialogue is. You can't believe what Leonardo DiCaprio is wearing a flamethrower, killing <laughs> fucking. You know. Yeah. Goddamn. It's to me. It's for me. It's that like playing around in history and like doing a revisionist like fictional history like i love that stuff like yeah. what I, if this happened differently yeah i i think if he's gonna go out and he's only gonna do one more movie i would prefer it not to be i, I think once upon a time in hollywood's great but if he's gonna end i feel like his last movie needs to be a true quentin tarantino movie and just be violent as fuck mm -hmm. like that movie you know it's got that violent ending but that's you know that's five minutes of a three-hour movie like when I think about Quentin Tarantino, I think about Kill Bill or Pulp Fiction or yeah. Django or Hateful Eight. They're all so violent in the most like stylistic and awesome ways. And I feel like his last movie needs to have that in it. It can't just I don't want it to just be about a movie critic, which I know mm -hmm. it wouldn't just be about a movie critic. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what I, mean? I want that. I, w I want that Quentin Tarantino. That oomph, hoopsba, yeah. yeah, gumption, all that kind of stuff. I agree. And I, what I, I'll end on this. What I love about Tarantino is that he stayed consistent. He never went and made just a commercial movie. He never, mm -hmm. like, decided to, like, that's the thing with, like, you got to remember when Tarantino, Tarantino was in Richard Linkletter and Kevin Smith, they were all talked about, like, these are all the up and coming guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know. <laughs> Tarantino's doing good. <laughs> yeah, Tarantino's on that like, cop out. <laughs> only the quality. I do think that the part of the issue with Kevin Smith and maybe his his um maybe this is something that gets to him deep down, maybe it doesn't, but he did not stick with what made him Kevin Smith. He he did try to go commercial and he did then try to like go backwards and, and reclaim. And it's it's hard at that point. Yeah. Um Let's have him on the pod and ask him about it. We'll ask the, we'll ask Kevin Smith the hard hitting questions we didn't ask Gil Cannon. <laughs> According we'll to our Kim why did your movie you. start sucking? Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm just a guy from New Jersey and whatnot trying to make fucking movies about fucking fart jokes and dicks and shit. I don't know. Okay. Hey, this was a fun episode, Abigail. Yeah. Did you have a great time? Yeah, it was cathartic. It was fun. I really enjoyed talking about the subject matter and. I'm excited to get off podcasting duties now and go watch movies in the living room and over there. Yeah, it's right there. Um, get some food, food. and enjoy the night. Yeah, love food. Food's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. good. Uh, Jacob, any final thoughts? Uh, no, I just I think everybody should go watch these older horror movies. The Omen. Watch it, please. Go watch the what is it called? The first Omen. What mm -hmm. the 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 titles are not the naming of the sequels is not great, but. Just go watch them because they need your help and they're actually good movies and like you know they're they're out there and hey I love, needs I, your help. I love I love Godzilla X Kong but like I mean it's literally as Jay Key keeps calling it it's like the Fast and the Furious there's zero substance to it uh, it's just like big dumb fun and that's okay sometimes but movies like The Omen uh, you know that are real movies that people are taking a lot of time and putting a lot of creativity into. Um, uh, they should be seen. So go go watch these movies. I love yeah, it. I have nothing else to say yeah, other than good night for Abigail Gardner and Jacob Bye. Walsh. My name is Craig Goldberg. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Yes Have Some Podcasts. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms mm -hmm. at YHS Podcast on Instagram, on like X. Mm -hmm. It's all for you, Patreon. We <laughs> oh, we should uh, we should tease the that next episode. Oh. We should. Jacob has this. Uh, he's got a great idea. Abby, I don't even know. If I don't think we, I was like, do you know what it is, Craig? I don't know what we it do. is. We've talked we, about it. We talked about it a little bit. Hit me I with think it. no, I did mention it. Are we to doing you. a uh, like a let's see what you think it is. What I think it is, is that we're doing like the draft. Like we're drafting no. movies. No, we're not going to no, do that. No. Although I have a couple ideas for that. Including that's already a podcast. Okay. The Ghostbusters soundtrack draft. No, we're going to talk <laughs> about aliens oh mm -hmm. ufos not the movie aliens oh 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm still excited. Aliens, UFOs, cryptozoology, ghosts, everything. Ghosts. We're going to give our opinions, and real opinions on, on the real most, things. Oh, that's fun. On the most yeah. famous uh, stories. And listen, I'd love to have Dan Aykroyd. I was on like, the well, this is all for Dan. But I don't know if he'll be able to like Dan. Will, all, I don't know if Dan is going to like what probably at least a couple like, of us nope, have to say about a lot of the stuff them. but no that's actually just, a human picking <laughs> i just feel like it'd be fun you know we talk about ghostbusters a lot we should talk we should give our real feelings on some Abby, of i think the paranormal the, thing okay the origin of this yeah. the origin of this is sometimes people assume because we love ghostbusters so much that we're like into ghost hunting and i don't think it right. could be further from the truth further from the truth if you guys right. ever want to have a great time watch abby and jake on a ghost tour at the Shining Hotel, and <laughs> we're just like, I'm like, what? I'm like, wow, that I think that pencil maybe moved. And I'm like, these people are trying to fucking make me join a cult. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, we'll uh, more on that soon. If you want to get extra bonus audio, extra content, and exclusive <laughs> access to the YHS Discord, mm -hmm. I suggest you listen to what's about to play as soon as this episode is done, mm -hmm. because you're going to learn more about the Yes Have Some Patreon. Okay. Mm -hmm. All and right. Hey, we'll see it ready. Pop yeah. culture right. coffee. Well, I was just gonna say Patreon got an extra thirty <laughs> minutes at the beginning of this episode. So. They did. Yeah, you all missed out. It was really intimate and private, and we said a bunch of revealing stuff. And you should probably go sign up. That's <laughs> it's true. Very, it's true. Really. No, we, we were did. we were honest. We, were, <laughs> we said what we're actually watching. We were vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. all right. It's good to be vulnerable. Okay. Well, bye. Bye. Oh, Jacob. Yes, Craig. You know how you always say we're doing too much and we need to scale back? I absolutely do. Well, it's not going to happen. In fact, we're going to do more. <laughs> oh, my God. But that's okay, because what I'm talking about right now is the YHS Patreon community, where you can unlock over five years of bonus audio content. Now, that sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean, that's enough. Every month, if you are part of the YHS Patreon, which you can sign up for at patreon.com slash yes, have some for as little as $5 a month, you can be part of the YHS Discord, which is exclusive to Patreon. And we do bonus audio episodes every month. And Jacob, we got a new Ghostbusters movie this year. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about. There's things that we really can't always talk about on the main feed, but we like to give a little behind the scenes insight to our Patreon folks. Sure. It's a really fun community over there, and it's really fun to throw some teases in there, some early videos or content that might not make its way on the main feed. There's also an Instagram. I don't I don't even know if you mentioned the Instagram. There's a, There's a an Patreon Instagram. exclusive Instagram. Uh, it is just like I said. We're really doing a lot. And honestly, YHS is our favorite thing. It's what we all want to be doing full time. And Patreon is really what helps us out the most. Absolutely. So like I said, patreon.com slash yes, have some for as little as $5 a month, you can get access. And there are a couple different tiers, including the top tier, which is a merch tier where four times a year you get an exclusive piece of YHS merch. And right now we're working on the one that's going to launch spring, summer. And I don't want to sell you guys on it too hard, but... It's going to be good. <laughs> You're going to be upset if you don't have this. So thank you for the continued support of YHS over the last eight years. And if you want to give a little bit and it goes directly to us and supports all this madness that we participate in, it's patreon.com slash yes, have some.